Miss Sampula Pinaka, Namaskaram, Salamalakum, Noaya, Kiorana, Mori, Eka Mori Omo, Hello Olgeta, Yakwe, Hafa Adai, Aloha, Rananim, Pakatalafa Atu, Talofa Lava, Maloelele, Maloni, Talofa, Warm Pacific Greetings. It is an honor and a great privilege to welcome you all to the 24th Biennial Conference of the Pacific History Association. My name is Anna Waite and I'm a, one of the history staff here at the University of the South Pacific in Suva, Fiji. On behalf of the history discipline of the School of Law and Social Sciences, I wish to thank you all for joining us today as we begin an exciting four day online conference. It has been a long and bumpy road since the last conference um, in Cambridge, and we are disappointed we could not uh, welcome you all face to face to a beautiful campus in 2020 as originally planned. In these challenging COVID times, we extend our heartfelt sympathies to all those in the Pacific and beyond whose lives have been disrupted by the pandemic. But despite COVID, we are pleased to report that we have received over 300 registrations for this online event, which is why we are currently using the Zoom webinar mode. This means that your microphones are disabled in this session, but you can still make comments or ask questions using the online chat function. Today's welcoming session will be recorded so that we can share it um, on the University of the South Pacific YouTube channel with the wider public. We will begin now with the traditional Itoke uh, Fijian welcome, known as the Iseu Sevu, which will be performed by Sikeli the Kambalavu, Waisake Raliwalala, and Mariah Nassau. Atuese Morgan Timalilifano is participating as the PHA representative and a bundle of waka, which is a dried Yangona root, is presented to welcome the PHA conference delegates to the Vanua um, and to the university. To complete the rite, Atuese Morgan Timalilifano will accept and reciprocate the waka on behalf of the PHA president and the association members. Sango <laughs> Pacific History Association. Ratsasaka <laughs> Nanu mama mama ipo dia apa kau bunji nak kena impal impal. Kau sakan na isebu isebu. Ni koran ibu le nene investi ni dia apa? Elu dah lah. Tak kena beli utaki. Na vice chancellor. Kerana beli dengan kami ni alu binaka. Niku cik ni cikot tanya mai nana tak bunuh. I see if you have a Talangani, but no Vichy. Number of Turangas, I got my Kumbuna. And on right, you got to go Sagan only to Rangana to come on a Vinivalu. Number of Turangas, I got a little man. You got to go to Rangasaka and Burimbasanga. Nonra in Ratan Ratan, one of Maraman Balin Rogatin the Ketchin of Vinivalu. 
Zamba baka turang sa katali chuko nga may na matin tuvio kanin ng buhin ng maseva na tova. E zamba sa katchuko may na alero kovo na yalo sa gandoka. Muni sa katurang na marama. Na singa sa ganda yebo kandi rongo. Sa nga wala nga no kenta ng bula. E ropa ka rongo talaga na ve kambula membali chikenta. Ve kambula ratua buli chikenta. Rambo bukan orang yang telah mengawir nak kenda Yesus tu. Rambo kana kena ngasih ni rancu kau main bulu. Rambo rancu kau bawa bulu. Gua nak kena indola. Ita kini naya dosa kaki nana bini gua mi. Entah bini telah no entah ini bapak nak kini naki. Anak budi anak kici. Bapak kano non tersenga merah wapak bini nak nabi kain tu bana. Tonton lihat nabi novi cik. Então quem não quer na banua, para quem não quer na cornibuli, lá mas só ele me manda rabi, vai estar lá no bim bimgo, me manda estar na quem não marroi, não é tudo tudo macaua, me vou cá na quem não sou consome na lá mas só quem não está passivita. Era na numa beca na mata, então mais dono ia nem não dende não está bicho atrás. E então para quem não vem na cani, para o tanga na calo levo chovo, em dona sala, me vão go na quem não irá aí. Eu orei tarro para não andar vai estar na noa. Eu orei se a catalã não tarro para não andar bula tá cana fica bim bim em balé de que anda. Me acerca então na cá. E se que tu não andar vai tu tu com a cava. Se não andar histis não vai andar bem na que a nisso com sombra de cima se anda. Me tá que nem a dosa que não vai de gomi. Tá mas o topo tá chegando a calor levou o chavo me alô 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 mas o puta não vive a calor na cata. Rapaz andir o rango tá lá o ir na. Kerana bukan orang sangat cukup mentai, kerana bukan di sana kita nama lio lala. Tapi awak kita awak sekian tu cukup berkenaan wasa wasa. Di sana kena engkau nongkau, mana mai bila kat sini. Di sana kena engkau nongkau, melelevi kian dah lelai tu kutu kan terbit telan nota kat sini. Sombong bukan kena nak kena rakit kena kena yalo. Balam balam sangat cukup nak bosan yang kau nanti sembuh sembuh. Rame, ubah dan berapa keturang sangat cukup na isu kosong kau. Ano isang kusang ko nito kuto kung makawan, alam mo sa kanyang tawas sa Pacifica. Uwa sa kanyang marama value taki. Kina vein de lambure. Nilewa na. Itsikola ka pala na usata mong pala na kenre muri. So, so, ragi ato. Aku tadi, aku mah cikgu mai ayam kona. Cikgu mai ni sebab-sebab ni universiti ni dewan ni pasifika. Cikgu nua ovici keibutuma. Enavuku, eni. Marama liu liu ni Paresteni ni Pacific History Association ira na liwena. Ule nei uwa u uina yale faalo alo matu mofie ole ava ole ava tali Ole tungase mai fiti. Ole tungase mai tonga. Mai lalo tonga kilipati, Marcela, Nauru, Niwe, Samoa, Solomona, Nivalu, Tokelau, Vanuatu. Ape afoi, ni usilani ma usitalia. Olha meu marido lá vale a ele tem telefone o olha canção por ele posse vacalé posse para o turanga ali universidade ou pacífico e saute papel foi ele pula maulunga ele vai chancela 
Professor Paul Alwalia. O lo mai mō mai i Nauru. Ka pea fōi ale mālu maurunga o le pule anga ale universite o le pasifika. Ma o le whālo ale maurunga lea o ta lia ina ma le anganga fia fia. E vai a vei hai lo leo ma sui o le palestene o le asosi o le pasifika i sose o na o le tala faa sol faa faa history tala anga faa sol hito o le vasa pasifika and hatori me le universite o Guam, o le nei wo te lia ina, le whaalo alo maulunga, mai le pule a le universite o le Pasifika. Ma le whaewatu ai le whaafta i te ale, ka whinaka wakarewu, wha hout kanda pātou, wha yaksia, mālo. Hei, gina. Kadi bosa ketika naya guna, naya guna waktu turanga, naya guna sab-sab ayah guna di bawah, naya guna nai sebu-sebu waktu turanga, naya guna saat ambil waktu turang sak ketika main na liu-liu ni korin guli, Profesor Paul Alwalia, kerana beli taki, naya guna saat ambil waktu turang sak ketika tengah main nama tadi tuh tolu. I kumbuna buat nangon turang sa kana tu kamba, nangon di balu kena kena sasap. I buat pasang buat nangon nangon meram balen nangon tu duket. Kena maten tu gangga nangon maten tu bawa kani nangon tawak. Kem dono kungan turang sa kalle buat nabah bini binak. Nak kena mai maten itu maten itu kita kain dona itu bo. Iba kerawu bawa kapun walangi langi. Bi kita we nangon maten kapun nak ni kuah. Kita waru mendo tak kebiasa, naik sebab sebab sena, bila kita baca kongkok, kita nawar mesti tertarung ini. Ini tu sama ida kebiasa, kalau lebu nafah bini binak, nanti kah, nak kena bulat tak kita, nak kena mata nanti kita, nai tobo, kena baca rundi nafah baca bunwa, tu mewar itu kita kena ngungguan itu rangai nama tak kebiasa. Sekali lebu ni nafah bini binak, kena kena baca moli moli tak, nak kena bulat itu nai tobo, nama tak kebiasa. Sabda dan berisak nai ngungguan hilangi, buat nanti mantas satu bongo. Me wasom buri ame nono na vee wakalo nga tataki. Kiwe kenda. Ena buku ni tavi. Enda sana na makituki na ena mbosi mbosi ka. Ena mataka vinaki nikwa. Ndo mbule tiko nongu ngwa ni turanga. Ndave mbule aki tiko. Nonde ili uli tiko mandanga o tiyawa. Ndave uli tiko mandanga na tawasi kini. Tawasi ni mbaki. Ena singi ni sudhu. Mana. Hei. Ndi na amundo. Mundo. Mundo. Amundo. Mundo. Mundo. Sa tamba saka na yangona. I'm going to suck a level. Now that completes the uh, traditional uh, welcoming ceremony. I would now like to invite the most reverend Dr. Winston Halapur, Archbishop Emeritus, Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God of creation, God of the ages past and the present, in the beginning, your spirit hovered over emptiness and darkness, bringing light and goodness. The dancing of your spirit brought the Moana, the Vanua, and all the many forms of life to bear. You speak and bring life. 
You are a God of stories. You speak in stories. Our stories reach from the beginning of time. Bless this 24th biannual conference of the Pacific History Association as we gather from silver and in different parts of our planet. With deep gratitude, we acknowledge the life of Reverend Dr. Kambasi Urian and his profound contribution to the study of history. His manner and work have inspired the theme of the conference in their own words. God of stories, as we explore this theme in your own words, bless all students and historians, participants and speakers, dancers and musicians, administrators and technology experts. Help us to listen and share wisdom. Help us to honor all our traditions, including stories told in carving, weaving, tapa, tattoo, song, and dance. Help us to recognize muted voices, to enable authentic voices to be heard. May stories, both ancient and new, enable us in the unfolding life of our context. Our ancestors voyage with wisdom, courage, and, and skill. May we, in our turn, chart our way through the challenges of our time with wisdom, courage, and skill. May all we share bless lands, islands, and the waves of the Moana. Through this conference, may our generation and coming generations be blessed. May the moving of God's spirit bring new visions, advance new ventures, and forward peace in our global goal. God bless us and make us a blessing. Amen. The most reverend Dr. Winston Halapua. I will now hand over to the, the Vice Chancellor and President of the University of the South Pacific, Professor Paul Aluali, who is joining us online from Nauru. Uh, Bula Vinaka, and uh, thank you very much. Warm Pacific greetings to all of you from Nauru. Uh, the most uh, Reverend Dr. Winston Halapua, thank you for your beautiful prayer. Dr. Teresi Wunidilo, our keynote speaker, Professor Anne Hattori, the president of the Pacific History Association, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, a very good, good morning to you all and uh, warm Pacific greetings. Um, I noticed on the, uh, as I was scrolling down to see the participants, that there are many eminent people who have joined us today and a warm welcome to all of you and of course many friends it was wonderful to see uh dr morgan and of course i saw that people like bridge are also joining us today so welcome to everybody it's a particular pleasure and honor to warmly welcome you all today to the opening of this uh, pacific history association 24th biennial conference for 2021 and I extend a special welcome to an alumnus of USP and our keynote speaker today, Dr. Teresi 
Uni Dillo, our invited panelists and speakers of this uh, auspicious occasion. I also want to acknowledge and appreciate all the participants present in the organizing committee. Today's gathering is in twofold, uh, as we know. It's not only at our Lotala campus, but also virtually. Uh, and I think it's a reflection of the fast evolving world we live in and the importance of cohesive adaptation for continuity in business today. I think the conference also provides a very unique opportunity to reignite, reimagine, and revitalize the importance of historical indigenous knowledges to fuel and reshape the Pacific future. Um, and I wish to acknowledge the collaborations that our university has with the Pacific History Association, most especially during this pandemic uh, period. I want to just uh, also say that um, it, it's interesting that uh, Throughout the world, the humanities seem to be ever more under attack in, in Australia, uh, you know, funding for those programs that are that uh, in somebody's mind no longer lead to uh, to uh, graduate employability uh, are no longer being funded and many of our humanities colleagues are under threat, as is the case in the UK where uh, it's expected that the uh, autumn funding um, review will, will do some very similar things. Um, and this is rather worrying trend for, uh, for the humanities and, and historians in general. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that uh, people understand that for us at USP, uh, history is an integral part of our uh, university. Um, it's an integral part of us being able to uh, deal with uh, our past. And uh, understanding our past always better, helps us better understand our future. Um, so I'm really pleased that this, uh, this, this as a post-colonial theorist myself, who is particularly interested in, uh, in the impact of, of colonization and, uh, and the way in which it continues to, uh, to wreak havoc upon our societies, I'm particularly interested in, in, uh, in the work that the Pacific History Association has been carrying out. Uh, but especially during the pandemic, from August, the mentoring uh, virtual seminar series uh, conducted in, in collaboration guaranteed continuity in learning support for our postgraduate students in Pacific research. And we really thank you for that. And of course, the editorial board of the Journal of Pacific History also established virtual seminars when the conference was postponed uh, as a result of the um, uh, pandemic. Um, and the, these sessions were, of course, well attended by local Fijians and international audiences, which included the um, eminent cultural anthropologist of the Pacific, uh, Marshall Salins, who is also a member of the PHA, PHA. I also want to acknowledge the resilient stance and continuous support for good governance and ethics by scholarly bodies through the practice of academic freedom. And I personally want to thank the PHA because, of course, they stood up for me and, uh, and uh, you know, really spoke uh, uh, truth to power. And I really appreciate that. These are not uh, things that, that any, uh, anybody takes lightly and, and really, really appreciate your support and your commitment um, to uh, good governance and ethics in the Pacific. As the premier institution for higher learning, we are aware of the responsibility and the role we play in our, um, essentially our new strategic plan and shaping uh, Pacific futures. I'm really grateful for the support and the contributions that have been fostered through the PHA. The Pacific is home to some of the best minds. And I'm really pleased to say that we have a distinctive opportunity and duty to shape and inspire the world and actually share the, uh, the excellence that uh, exudes uh, our Pacific uh, colleagues. Um, I have no doubt in mind that this will be a very memorable experience for those who are attending this conference for the first time. For those uh, who are interested in the area, it's an opportunity to create a lasting legacy in mentorship for research and dissemination for the early stage academics and researchers in our younger talent and the students that are present. So we strongly urge people to collaborate with us at USP to, uh, to help us um, uh, facilitate that mentorship. And finally, we wish, I wish the uh, PHA uh, um, attendees 
well at this conference and USP will continue to extend its support to the national and re regional programs and efforts to empower the education of the people and the region of Pacifica. Uh, with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for inviting me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, and I wish you all the best uh, over the next few days. Thank you. Banaka. Thank you, uh, Professor Paul. Our next speaker is none other than the Pacific History Association President, Professor Ann Hattori, um, who will be speaking to us from Guam. Please welcome Professor Hattori. Thank you, Anna. Half a day, Bula Vinaka to all of you joining us from across the global expanse that is Oceania now. On behalf of the Pacific History Association, welcome to our 24th PHA conference. We ended our, our last conference in Cambridge, BC, before COVID. <laughs> Uh, we are very happy with that conference, but we were very excited to be coming to Suva. This is USP's third time to host PHA with previous conferences in 1985 and 2008. Three times. This is more than any institution has hosted our biennial event. So to USP, to the Honorable Vice Chancellor and President Professor Paul Alualia, Vinaka Vakalevu. COVID has caused tremendous isolation and anxiety for many of us, disrupting our lives in complex ways that historians will no doubt ponder for years to come. But amidst the chill of this pandemic, more than 300 people have registered for this conference. This strongly affirms the deep dedication that we share for our islands and our histories. Perhaps few embody this passion for Oceania as did our beloved friend and colleague, Teresia Tewa. And this conference inaugurates the PHA Teresia Tewa Award to honor her legacy. During the closing session, we will present the award to a budding scholar for a presentation that reflects the kinds of critical creativity that Terry fostered. Also at the closing ceremony, we will uh, be awarding the Gunson Prize uh, awarded by our partner, the Journal of Civic History to an emerging scholar for an essay that makes a valuable contribution to historical knowledge. I would also like to recognize Dr. Nicholas Halter and Dr. Atuese Morgan Tuimele Alifanu and to the entire USP planning committee the team of volunteers who will be primarily invisible to us as we zoom in, but who are nonetheless on their toes, nervously, anxiously attending to tech issues and other logistics to see that this runs as smoothly as can be. I regret that we are not in Suba to thank you personally, to hug and kiss and to reciprocate your Pacific hospitality towards us. But we also appreciate that reciprocity is patient and we shall meet again. Nick and Morgan, thank you so much for your perseverance through this entire um, ordeal here, for your good humor and your flexibility. You have had to make countless adjustments to weave all 300 of us together into a giant and vibrant Zoom mat upon which we will sit and share our stories for the next few days. The Pacific History Association gives thanks and praise to you. Lastly, I encourage each of you to attend the PHA meeting at the end of today's business. Adrian Muckle, Secretary Treasurer and I will do our best to keep the agenda on point. And there are a few important items that you may have already seen in a series of emails over the past week. There is a taxation matter that we need to think about, but we will also select the venue for our next conference, the 20th PHA, and we will be selecting new board members and new officers, including a president as down at the end of this conference. 
I have been honored truly to serve the Pacific History Association. At this point, as PHA president, I officially hand the reins of this conference over to this year's convener and the master weaver of Zoom mats, Dr. Nick Calter. Uh, Most Reverend Dr. Winston Halapua, Professor Pal Alawalia, colleagues, friends, uh, welcome to the PHA 21, 21 online conference. We were so looking forward to welcoming you in person uh, to Lofala campus, but we are relieved that we were able to come up with an alternative despite the disruptions of COVID. On behalf of my team at USP, uh, Morgan Tuimalele Fano, Anawaiti Matandrandra, Jacqueline Ryle and Dario De Rosa. Thank you for placing your trust in us and your support for the PHA. We apologize in advance for any unforeseen technical difficulties that may arise during this event. Um, sorry, I was just double checking it, uh, whether there was a slight power cut, but that's okay. Um, so where there may be some unforeseen technical difficulties, um, and, and I'm sure there's gonna be some IT hiccups along the way, um, but that's one of the reasons why we tried to keep the registration fee as low as possible and to make this event as accessible as we can. Uh, we're proud to host the PHA conference for the third time at USP. And my colleague Morgan will reflect on the journey since 1985 in our closing session on Saturday. The theme of this gathering in their own words honors our dear friend Compass, and Jacqueline will speak more about him shortly but I certainly remember him as a scholar who nurtured and cared deeply for his students. This is why when we started planning this event, we wanted to put our students front and center. And I'm very grateful to the USP students who contributed to this welcoming ceremony today. Special thanks to Anna, our MC, to Sikeli Thakabalavu, Waisake Tholai Lati, Rali Walala, and Mariah Nassau for their traditional welcome and to the Kiribati Students Association and their president, Bate Sieki Siosi, for preparing a performance for us later today. Some of our history students have also prepared a video for us, which we will show shortly. We're very proud here at USP to have what I think is the largest cohort of undergraduate students studying Pacific history in the world. Right now, we have over 500 students currently completing semester two studies of Pacific history at USP. Because of COVID, the semester was extended. So it's week 13, the deadlines are fast approaching. <laughs> and many of them will go on to become teachers in our schools and leaders in our communities. I'm very excited to see a large number of postgraduate student presentations and registrations for this conference, which reinforces my own feeling that Pacific history is still strong and growing, renewed by our students and relevant to the lives of Pacific Islanders, in spite of all the things going on in the world right now. This is why we invited three early career scholars to be our keynotes. And I sincerely thank Dr. Tarisi Vunindilo, Reverend Dr. Latu Latai, and Majalin Kim in advance for what I'm sure will be inspiring presentations. So good luck to all our presenters and we look forward to a fruitful online discussion with you in the coming days. Thank you, Vinaka. Um, I'm just uh, interrupting again. Uh, I'm just checking my phone a message and there may have been a power cut at Lofala campus as expect as, as sometimes happens. Um, so I'm sure you can understand. Um, I'm just gonna wait a second and see if Anna and our friends in the ICT theater will rejoin. Um, but perhaps while we wait for them to rejoin, um, we actually had a video of uh, welcoming uh, you uh, from our USP students. Um, so I'll try and share it here online now, um, but sometimes sharing videos on Zoom is a little bit tricky. So I'll also put a YouTube link in the chat um, so that you can also listen to the video on your own YouTube accounts for a better connection. Uh, so that video is about 10 minutes long and that should give us enough time for uh, uh, USP to reboot and rejoin us. Thank you.
ao bula re ai zangu openino monte tampo au zangu tu mana yanu yanu wa turang ibi ombia na sano mabu mi au sama tere mai en on the so many the one di e na be ama au en rondo rosa na bula andua para te ina tu ana university level pasifi Nau na ai au buli tia ina university ni level pasifika e lozala. Na wuni ongu buli le tia ina wei ama au ni onda bula. Maleta ni na do bola tunga e man tutu una e palai. Iyo na ngau na ai sa do dono me e mami la avo nga na itau e ni wanua ai. E na pandi evi a wei ai e valet e mani. Sabi nga avade. Aslam alaikum bula venaka. Hamanam Evelyn Alihe. और इस साल के 2021 पैसिफिक हिस्ट्री एसोसिएशन कॉन्फ्रेंस में आप सबका स्वागत है इस साल पैसिफिक हिस्ट्री एसोसिएशन कॉन्फ्रेंस यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ द साउथ पैसिफिक होस्ट करे है और थीम है इन आवर ओन वर्ड्स हम अपन अंडर ग्रेजुएट डिग्री 2014 से 2018 यूएसपी लोदाला कैंपस से कंप्लीट करा और अपन पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट डिग्री भी लोदाला कैंपस से अभी कम्प्लीट करता है हम यूएसपी एज ए यूनिवर्सिटी चूज करा बिकॉज यूएसपी प्रोवाइड करे है क्वालिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन और आगे काम करे के वस्ते और आगे असली दुनिया में कदम करे के वस्ते एक ट्रेनिंग और एक सहायता जिसे हम सकता बोले और लड़कन लोग के वस्ते नवा चीज सीखे के आजादी जो और कोई शायद नहीं कर पाई एक बार फिर आप सबके हिस्ट्री एसोसिएशन में कॉन्फ्रेंस में बहुत बहुत स्वागत है और हम लोग के ज्वाइन करने के वास्ते बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया नो आया एम ओ री से तेने ओस अतकोआ से कॉन्फ्रेंस ने पैसिफिक हिस्ट्री एसोसिएशन एफ फ्रॉम रोंगहुल मता ने सोक ए यूएस पिता अमनेक ने तो ने ते इस या ए ओरिस फेंग ओ तो असले जॉन तौकावे मंगोले फाने मरहा म इतुतीउ ए ओस ओतमोटा रुतुमा ngopoma graduate e hanap ne history e yospita e fotofse mango waf ti pause rese ne history e reko e avat ne ngo fa mia mia ngo ngat ke waf la voice os rong rong ne tousa ma hanuchu ne leum e otoma pinga ma oto rua ma heleum se teranite i ngo nonoma la waf la voice os rong rong ma hanuchu voexia ma hololum se isatakoa Mamna bene ni meuri. Harau ngai moni pong na watar. Ngai pun kan kiri pes. Ugure ni koin kami ke ni koin kami na kon na peperong. Ke na peparu tu guran deiri yeri tata. Tepe tepe ke me yak. Kainis na koi ate. Tepe tepe ke ake kame te pai rong rong ni kawai. Te spa ke te putu ni yang. Anda bukan bayar yang kami nanun tetapi ayuh puput yang akan ayat akan. Nun ayat ayat ke ayat kati ke dikira pengaira kai tepi tepi. Ikan rawa kami tepi ilau tala kampus. Ia nata kami tepi yang rong rong ni kawai. Pa ini bayar anak buah rong rong ia rapi kasih bu. Ke Kerong rong rong dapat kau dah nak tidur. Hampir senda pada bukan amitai atau keroy kami ni kata ni. Kau rana engah taya ke otemuan nui o iba. Kucuri ni toku ingua eva inerar tunga au. Nanti kau kau rana. Nau mai tau mai kita ui pa anga nui at Pacific History Association ruat awat sini eruang arumata. Ko mata ko te arewana nga o te moana paitonga o iwa. Te akatere o te ea kai kōrero. Te tsumu tāpura nui ko ia oki, i roto i to o reo tikai, e tawira au no USP Hook Islands. Ko tau te ea api i ki ake te paipai no te moana nui o iwa. I te titia atu i ngā kōrero o mua ana. Te rauka i te akatuke nui i te autangata e no o nei tātou i te ea. Nei taki maata ki a koutou te atui mai kua maatou. Iago komo jaole. O tata i ka naan pagiani i mkarawaini ni kutu koyuk ngan kuilogi naan PHA ak Pacific History Association. Iemei stali mkarawaini. 
Yan yun po dito yung low region yun at USP. Kung yung taliwan ko yung laki, ay yun yung nanon ko yung laki. At ayun yung winter law yun, yung mga chun likaw ng major. Yung yung ekar pagsatiyan Pacific history ko yung 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 USP. Kung yung kanaga yung kila yung aur, pati yung malalata ko yung walo, at pagsigir, yung yung warin po yung yung alaptata, yung yung layang maray niyo yung laki. Naik pejara kerja, akan mulu lu kena merungkak kau batu. Ceraman yang paling aja aku, kamu. Alvasia, aku mau kau ganjil marai mua, kau fikir tiga pia. Kau nak sekolah di the University of South Pacific, kifasi atau the history. The history atau tangga tani. Asal suamai kita wiroa ina makia tetea kau kita tafito oanea ya turang anei katoa. Ini tangga tanai mai mua awo komai kivasieni. Tangi fakawe kia koto niu mai osokomai kia komato. Kemauan mua ya kami memang. Ateng kerwa komai kami yang betulnya Pacific History Association Conference 2021. Nana kerwa staker terang bina USP. Egan wata theme betulnya puake esker during wear. Aku harus naik ke kreatif USB. Me cuma ni benda yang kreatif history yang punya me Pacific. Cuma ni kalau ni ame benda ram cheap dan kalau wow me nawa reng nawa aku. Kalau kalah hiatu, kau hingga aku kau George George Valiana mai hingga tu kau ni way. Kau hafal kita skalafa mai hingga Pacific. History Association Conference o Afe Moe Ofu Mataha. Koe matapatu manatu mai whakaholo anga nei haiai ke he halautolu a tau kupu. In their own words. Koe au koe tama whakaako ke he aonga pulotu USP ke he mutu nei ko niwe. Koe kakano nei whakaako au ke histori ke he aonga pulotu ko USP niwe ha koe haaku a manako ke nga hua fai aonga histori a nuiha. Whakaue ko whanaunongo mai ke au nuena. Saya faham bahawa melalui mama, kalau orang awak usah mui sifatnya masa, mama awak usah mui. Oti fata lu fatu, ada Pacific History Association Conference luar fikus mama jadi lene, walau fata lu mina, ilai yang mesti awal, ada Pacific. Orang mana cakap tu lene faham lu mui, efah bel, in their own words, pasal mui na, ia nak cakap up. Ano ang wala sa mga nai ilalang mo lo kala mo lo to ay ngayon na ay matag upo ni nai sa lafaso pito. Ito ay wala sila sa wala ay na le nai matag upo. Sa tuto ay wala ay mamala malama. Yung sa tuto ay a, yung sa tuto pu ang a, mamaya ay na tuto pu yung sa umabay. Ito ay yala ay sa tuto mo le lo na ay mo sa tuto wala ng fafteti lava sa lafaso ifo. Maloni, tukoy ng mga ko Joanne O'Brien Baya, ko ay hamay tukel lao. Pagkahato ng mai, kita ng tanga tene yata hawhiw talaga ka halupito at pahika, yawa ka hawe yata university at pahika ay hawte. Pero yata USP, luwa haluwa hulutahi. Kote ka uto tene yawa ng tanga, ewe mai yalato kupu. I yalato kupu. Na hita cia ato mo tako puti nai ona talaga ko halupito iti universitet ato pahihika iha ute ona ay ko toku huya mahala malama mo toku huya iluwa atsili kina atala tuku o te kaluwa mai tena ato pulanga kite nai ato pulanga. Kay mai he ay ke iluwa ito tangatatana anga nuku ana tu mo to naka hinomanga. Aga he tay lahi Malay lang Maria ho egi malele ay tonga ko to. Ko kinoa ko so niya sa wakay. Ko ha umikol mo to mo to. O fafay loa kifia ki mo to e kao ta fakataha ta ha ay sto liya e pasifiki ki wakay wa ta ha. Ayok tay tay lele ya e he universite e pasifik tonga pa ko yung ilo ko USP. Ko kafe nga ay fakataha ni ok peyon na fakalea. I e nao lea pe. In their words, okwo lotong ako historia ihe USB ay ko tayo yaya ay 
to tangata to kola ye ko hili pena ak fili e mala eni ke ino ya hokita mo mahi no ya ke hokota kinga lolotonga mo no a ya la va ke fai hava kai fa ek te mika mo fa ka to uta ke ka u ne te kita to be ni ta a ta kai be ye ta si yo be ye ta le a be ma lo ke to mo ka mai tu a fa to ta la fa tu ke a ko to ka to a to ko ngo ko ta no su meo a se thama fine mai tu valu fa ftai ko ka fa ta si ta to fa ma na tu te fa no tanga te ne mo fe no te pasifika e na ta la fa ka so lo pito e te ta sanga te ne lo a fe lo a ta si te mo na tu ko mo te ta sanga te ne e fa i pe ne e ro to nga na ma sa ni a o e a ko nga i tu valu te ne i ko te ma nga ta se te USP te la e tu i ko ne i tu valu Awe fia fia tau loto ne au, atala faka solo pito ite pasifika, te mata au pute nei, au wa e tau wa ke au ke tau loto ne au wa kutupunga, pe na foku i motala i ma afu ma ye ta tau te kau pasifika, pe na foku i motala ma ye na mua ke lo ne au yo na aso nei, fia fia fuki au wa tau loto, akonga ne ma ye ta tau te kau pasifika ma ye na mua. Faftai lasi, muti oku mai. Faftai lasi, kato fa. Bungan tu kan ikir bungan not pasifik. Ni sik betsegi watas. Nambe not fa notu, nungun nadan watiti eresu, ne sitim bepentibus. Nemkar warwa kit bunga, ma lon pasifik association conference, 2021, ane University North South Pacific Tangiti Dalat lap na Nakit Kukodanan lo Ay imbe Ranar dal Nga hapol Ni anum Mausuri ni sosok Emalus Kampas Anum mausuri ni nakit dun North South Pacific Ula ni logo bian ekli Nakit dun ni rubunga Na watiti ere irubunga Naut South Pacific, Kalasan Bali. Um, uh, um, in the spirit of the the conference theme, we have we had prepared a video which you've just watched uh, of our history students, past and present, from around the region, offering their welcome. Um, in their own language. Um, the theme of uh, the, the gathering uh, is um, in their own words, which pays tribute to the work of the late Ikiri Bas historian and uh, USP lecturer, Reverend Dr. Campus Uriam. Campus was a dear friend to many, um, many staff and students in our school. And now I would like to invite Dr. Jacqueline Dra to say a few words about uh, Reverend Dr. Campus. It's a great honor and pleasure to give this tribute to our dear friend and colleague, Kambas, who left us far too soon. I first met Kambas at Pacific Theological College here in Suva in 1997 when I was doing my doctoral research. We later became colleagues when I taught anthropology at the neighboring Pacific Regional Seminary in 2005. And here at USP, we co-supervised two PhDs on Fiji Methodist church history. How can one describe Kambas, a man of so many facets? First and foremost, a great storyteller, kind and generous, a quiet man who never sought the limelight, but preferred to sit on the edge of a gathering, observing and listening, a man with inner depth, strength, resilience and determination, at times incredibly stubborn. In the final years of his life, Kambas almost died several times, yet each time he bounced back to life and returned to his office, his beloved teaching and his students who meant so much to him, and his research, continuing undeterred as if nothing had happened. 
Plumbus was also a great wit, his face so easily and readily breaking into that wide grin and those laughing eyes, always ready with a joke and funny stories told with a mischievous glint in his eye, his listeners cracking up and he himself laughing as heartily and loudly as everyone else. He was a scholar of great depth of thought and sharp intellect. Reading through his acknowledgements in, in their own words of those who particularly inspired him academically at that time is like taking a stroll down a memory, cor memory lane corridor in the Coombs building at ANU. Eric Scar, who supervised his MA, Neil Gunson, who later supervised his PhD, Robert Langdon, Donald Denoon, all contributed greatly to his intellectual development, as did Barry McDonald at Massey. And Harry and Honor Maud, who became family friends, always generous and supportive, Harry allowing Cambas to use his materials and taking great interest in his research. Cambas wrote beautifully when he could be compelled to write, but he was also frustratingly disorganized. While he loved to share his experiences, thoughts and ideas and discuss with others, so that having lunch with Kambas was being transported to the wars, political intrigues, dances and chants of ancient Kiribati, or to compelling theological reflections, for Kambas to actually sit down and transpose this deep cultural knowledge and theological thinking into formal academic writing, into any writing other than lecture notes, was a different story. It was indeed an oral culture that Kambas embodied in his whole being. We're very fortunate to have in their own words with its density of detail and description, finely nuanced reflections and perceptive analyses and which is so beautifully written. Yet for this very reason, it is deeply frustrating that Kambas did not write many more works. He had so much to tell. The paper he gave in Guam in 2016, suddenly turning up from his hospital bed, determined to present, though desperately ill, was one Helen Gardner described as excellent, and she subsequently urged him to send it to her for JPH. But Kambas couldn't find it. After his death, Helen and I corresponded in the hope it might somehow be retrieved and published posthumously. With Son, Kambas' son's help, I searched everywhere, but to no avail. The thought of it being lost is just so sad. In the final weeks of his life, Kambas was deeply engaged in new research he was very excited about, taking copious notes right up until hours before he died. He quite literally left in mid-sentence. We can, however, thank Helen Gardner for her dedicated editorial work after Cambas's death on an earlier article of his, Coconuts and Fautasi, In Search of a Pacific Theology, which was published under both their names in the theological journal St. Mark's Review in 2018. I'd like to finally send warm greetings from us all to Cambas's family. Maori, Nena, Son, Ruta, Iaoni Men, and Rakunene. We know you miss Kambas so much, but you have so much to be proud of. And we trust you'll share in our joy at finally being able to celebrate his contributions and legacy to the Pacific at this conference. I'd also like to thank the Kiribati students who will be performing, performing for us just after this for uh, gracing us with your beautiful dancing and for bringing us close to Kiribas, Kambas would be so proud. Korapa Minaka. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline Rao, for that wonderful tribute to the late uh, Reverend Dr. Campus Uriam. I would now like to invite the uh, Kiriba Student Association to the stage. Um, they have kindly prepared uh, a performance for us today. 
The dance is called Te Kaimato and originates from the southern part of Kiribati. It represents the movement of the frigate bird. Um, the dancers move their hands to portray how the frigate bird moves its wings to fly. Please welcome the USP Kiribati Student Association uh, performers.
Karabwa, and thank you, Rumete Akau, Julie Karawiki, um, Kaburong, Borekiao, Tiabiki, um, Artiki Katabo, and the K Kiribati Student Association President, Bait COC. I can see Max with his full smile behind his screen. I bet he wants to dance as well. <laughs> that was a wonderful performance and a perfect way to honor our colleague, the late uh, Dr. Campus Uriam. Um, I know it's week 13 of the semester, which means students are very busy with assignment deadlines. So we are really grateful that you could take the time to join us today. Um, now I will hand over to Dr. Nicholas Halter to introduce our guest speaker for today. Thank you. Dr. Anna, and uh, yes, thanks again to our Kiribati dancers. It must be, a, must be a strange experience to dance in front of a big theater with not many people in it. So uh, well done on doing that. Um, unfortunately, we had to sort of follow our COVID restrictions in Fiji, but um, you know, our hearts go out to all our students who um, uh, have been far, living far from home for a long time, probably missing their families and, and struggling through a, a, a pretty long COVID lockdown in Fiji. So. So thank you, uh, Koramba, and, uh, and well done. Um, unfortunately, our next speaker, who was going to be Opeta Alafayo to introduce our keynote, uh, had to withdraw unexpectedly, and he sends his apologies. So um, I'll be introducing our first uh, keynote speaker for this event. Dr. Tarisi Vunindilo is joining us from Hawaii today. And those who have been following her career will know that she is a very familiar, uh, very familiar with presenting online. Tarisi is from the island of Kandavu in Fiji. She's a Kai Kandavu louder and proud. Uh, and she's also a, a proud graduate of USP, having completed a BA in geography, history and sociology. Uh, Tarisi has a rich interdisciplinary background, uh, having completed a postgrad diploma in arts, majoring in archeology span from the ANU, master of science in anthropology and a postgraduate diploma in Maori and Pacific development from the University of Waikato and a PhD in Pacific Studies in 2016 on the topic of Iyao Vakaviti, Fijian Treasures, Cultural Rights and Repatriation of Cultural Materials from International Museums at the Center of Pacific Island Studies at the University of Auckland. She was a professional teaching fellow and lecturer at the University of Auckland from 2012 to 2018 before taking up her role as assistant professor in anthropology at the University of Hawaii Hilo. Tarisi has, has published two books and several articles about Fijian pottery, language, and archaeology. But I th think most Fijians would know Tarisi from her YouTube channel and her Facebook page called Talanoa with Dr. T. What began as an activity to reach Fijians all over the world during COVID has since grown to become a regular program of interviews, educational presentations, and language classes. Opeta helped me and he actually counted all the videos. Uh, to date, I think she's posted 501 videos, uh, many of which are delivered in the Fijian language. And she's even roped in her husband to join along on the journey. Um, look, I'm sure Tarisi wishes she could be in Fiji right now, but we are so grateful to have her online and to open our session today. So uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. T. Um, Dr. Nick for uh, the warm welcome and the lovely introduction. Um, and aloha uh, to all our distinguished guests, uh, our USP Vice Chancellor and uh, our PHA President as well, uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Alualia. Uh, PHA President Professor N. Hattori, and also a big Vinaka Vakalevu uh, to the hardworking organizing committee uh, for the wonderful work you have done thus far. And I also like to say Vinaka Vakalevu for inviting me to be one of the three uh, keynote speakers for this uh, auspicious occasion. Um, I have to be um, honest when I received the invite. I wasn't sure whether I was the right person or whether the email was going to the wrong person. Uh, but after reading it further and uh, speaking with Dr. Nick and a few others in the committee, I realized that I do have a voice uh, to share uh, on this wonderful event. So again, a warm bulavinaka from uh, humid, rainy Hilo on the big island of Hawaii. Okay, so I'll try and share my 
uh, PowerPoint. So Nick, if you can just tell me if you can see one big screen. Yes, yes, we can see it, Tarisi. Or just one small one. Maybe I should unshare and just have one. That yeah, we'll it, just it, have. Said, it showed presenter view before. Okay, all right, so I'll see if this works. Okay, yeah, Set. this is okay. Yep. Set, okay. Okay, again, the Nakavaka level for the warm invitation to uh, invite me to be part of this uh, event. Um, so I present, I've uh, prepared something uh, to share and to empower our, our listeners, particularly to our indigenous um, uh, friends uh, who are logging in uh, from Fiji and also around the world. So as we often do in the um, uh, Pacific or Oceania way of doing things, I will have to introduce myself in my Fijian language. And so I decided to share with you um, a series of posters that my daughter created as part of the Fijian language week last year, as part of the Talano with Dr. T platform. So if you bear with me, and I will introduce myself in the Vosava community. Nimbula Binaka, Naedango Tarisi, Aungone Ni Kandavu, Nanongu Koro on a Tokalau, Nanongu Koro Nivasu on Nukunuku, Nanongu Matinitu on Burumbasana, Nanongu Yasana or Kandavu, Nanongu Tikina or Yahweh, Nanongu Yabusa or Rauni, Nanongu Matangali or Nangani, Nanongu Tokotoka or Narona, Nanongu the Wuti or Rauni, Nanongu Tutu Wakavanua, Nambati, Nanongu Kau, the Senitoa, Nanongu Manu Manu, Nangani Batu. Nanongu Ika Nasanga. So for those of you who uh, may not be familiar with the Vosavaka Viti, um, I've just introduced myself in uh, Fijian and saying my name and where I'm from and all the totems and the animals and the fish and everything that encompasses me. And so I bring all of my beautiful island of Kandavu, uh, which is the center of my universe to you all today. So as a, a marama itoke, I feel humbled to be in your midst to say a few words to kickstart this wonderful event as we reflect on the theme of the conference in their own words. I pay homage to Reverend Dr. Campus Uriam of Kiribati, whose words are used as our theme for this conference. And what a beautiful performance that our Kiribati students have just done few minutes ago, Koraba Vinakabakalevu. And I'll quote from uh, his book uh, by Reverend Dr. Kampas. I quote, Gilbert's oral tradition is a collection of stories about the ancestors as remembered and understood by the chronicles and the people. These stories for generations have been transmitted by word of mouth. Although their verbal nature makes them intangible, many are authentic when tested and compared with written or other hard facts, unquote. I reflected on this theme and I have to say that I was re-energized as I reflect and recenter my journey on what is the most important people, uh, what is the most important thing, which is my language and my people. So the theme that I've chosen for my presentation today is the power of the spoken word. Namana nivosa, yes, Words are spoken, words are heard, and words are felt. I would also like to acknowledge the words shared by the late Dr. Teresia Tewa, who also have a special lineage to Fiji through her Banaba and Rambi heritage. Minakabakalebu Dr. Teresia for reminding us of what our individual and collective responsibility is. So if you read, her, uh, the words on the screen here, uh, it's, it reads, I quote, the Pacific Ocean is the largest single geographical place on the planet. Our ancestors found it, settled it, and it's a gift that we have a responsibility to look after with our minds, with our hearts, and with our spirits, unquote. We knock level, Dr. Teresia, for those beautiful words. So what I decided to do is to reflect on those key words with my Fijian language. And so I looked at it and I said, okay, 
let's do some exchange here, Dr. Garcia. And so I look at the word minds, it's called vakasama, hearts, uto, and spirit, yalo. So this reminded me that this responsibility is holistic. It combines our minds, our hearts, and our soul. Wow, what a wonderful reminder. And as indigenous people, this was the way life was for us. It was holistic, it was symbiotic, and it makes culture and nature one. And now that I live in Hawaii, I've got to enjoy the beautiful Hawaiian language. And so I also wanted to include their language in my Talano today. And the word is responsibility, and in Hawaiian is kuleana. So I embrace this beautiful word to express that kuleana is the Hawaiian word for responsibility. Kuleana encourages everyone to be accountable for what we do. And that is something that we are all reminded today, especially for our indigenous brothers and sisters who are living, uh, who are living abroad and also back in the islands to be reminded of this wonderful responsibility in maintaining our language and also passing on our beautiful history to our younger generation. Now to kickstart my talano today, I will use a pakatauki or pepeha from Aotearoa, which was my home for the last 16 years. So those of you who've been following me, I've been traversing the Pacific Ocean from island to island. So I'm not sure which other island I'm gonna go to next, maybe Guam. So, uh, <laughs> so this is such a beautiful pepeha that I always enjoy sharing. And it goes like this. What is the most important thing in the world? And the answer is hetangata, hetangata, hetangata. Hekanaka, hekanaka, hekanaka. In my Fijian language, oikenda saka natamata, natamata. So it is the people, it is the people, it is the people. And as a toke, I will be using my toke language today to highlight the key points that I would like to be sharing with you all today. So I would like to challenge our brothers and sisters from around the region who are listening in today. I would like to challenge my indigenous brothers and sisters here to ask themselves these three questions, not only our indigenous brothers and sisters, everyone that is listening here today, asking the question, who am I? Or they will. How can we visualize history? How can we contribute in making history more audible? So here I'm requesting our knowledge holders or our younger brothers and sisters to ask more critical questions about themselves. And I'm requesting our knowledge holders, whether they back in the village or in urban areas or in the diaspora, to be visible in the history spaces. So we can, one, tell our own stories, two, sing our own songs, three, we can write our own stories too. Yes, we can do it. We have some amazing role models that we can look up to so we can be able to visualize our history and make our younger ones learn from it too and make our history more audible. So everyone can also hear and learn from them as well. So to answer those three questions, I've decided to answer them in three points here, which will guide what I will be sharing with you today. So the key answers that I put together here is my love for indigenous knowledge, my love for language, and my love for research. So I'm sure many of you who are listening in will um, connect with what I'm sharing with you today. So my talano today will be a personal one and it will be a real one. Yeah, it'll, it's from the heart and it's from my heart to yours. So with, with these three answers that I've posted up here, this has become my yavu or the foundation of what I do every day. Today, I will be sharing my own story, just like the late Dr. Teresa Tewa and the late Reverend Dr. Campus uh, Uria. And my talanoa or storytelling is built on these three key points that I will be um, sharing with all of you because these three points matter to me right now. So let's go to the first part. So my love 
for indigenous knowledge. And uh, in the course of my uh, PhD research, I included uh, what I learned in New Zealand. Uh, when I was in New Zealand, I um, heard a phrase that was called the kete of knowledge or basket of knowledge. And for those of you who may not know uh, me, my late mother was a prolific weaver. And when I heard that when I was in New Zealand, I just love it so much. I uh, connected to it you know, very quickly because of the weaving. And so I decided to add that into my thesis where I include the Katuniwu wisdom, Katuniwosa language, and Katuniwakasama, which is our worldview. And in the um, Maori language, it's Kete. In the Fijian language, in other parts of Fiji, it may be called Kete Kete. Sometimes it's called Kato. And in Tonga, it's also called Kato. So these are bags or baskets of knowledge that guides me to what I do today. So my late mother, for those of you who may not know, apart from her being a prolific weaver, she was also an amazing storyteller. She ignited an interest in me because out of the seven siblings, um, I was the only one that I was born in Suva. All the rest were born on my beautiful paradise of Kandavu. And so they had a much more rich cultural life uh, compared to mine. So I used my mom and my dad to tell me all the stories that they experienced on Kandahu. So to me, the words that they shared with me were real. The words moved me and the words they shared consumed me. And so I thought to read at a very young age. And so when I went to school at Nambua Primary School and Secondary School, I remember I used to stand in front of the whole school during the Ratasukuna day and recite Fijian poetry. I learned how to sing Langasere. I learned how to make it, dance, and I even learned how to make coconut oil or wakasanga waiwai during my primary school days at Nambua. And I acknowledge these Itoke teachers who helped nurture me from my young age. Mrs. Bonromo, Mrs. Seru, Mrs. Uliviti, and Mrs. Naisoro. And these were the teachers who instilled in me not to forget my language and my identity. And so my life carried on. And as I started to ask my questions, you know, every day, how to reflect, recenter, and remember myself in this world, especially that my family move around the Pacific. So my children have to adapt to every country that we move to. But all in all, I always remember what is my responsibility. And I remember my parents always reminded me about that. What is my responsibility? What is my kuleana? Nadabana no mitavi to keep our stories alive and continue passing our oral history to the next generation. And so you can see here on the map, um, Kandavu is right down there on the Southern part of Fiji. And I have to say that's the best part of Fiji. Okay, that's okay, I know I'm biased, but that is my home and that is Kandavu. And so I constantly remind my students, uh, language students and those that I teach on my platform is to Ask yourself these questions. Who am I? How do I connect to my Banua? How do I connect to my Abusa? How do I connect to my Matangali? How do I connect to my Tokotoka? And these are all the indigenous knowledge that I'm trying my very best to share on my digital platform that Dr. Nick just mentioned earlier on. Another key question that I also raise on my Talanoi Dr. T program is asking our Fijian youths, how does this Itutu Bakabanua or Itabi Bakabanua make sense to me? So when you look at this uh, table over here, I thank my daughter for creating it for me, Merewe Rita. So I introduce myself as a warrior. I'm a warrior princess, so I'm Ambati right there on the screen. So many of us um, Fijians, or so it's okay, we are born into uh, these uh, tribes. Yeah, so sometimes my students ask me, oh, Dr. T, can I change tribes? I said, no, yeah, you'll stay in your tribe forever. Uh, but that's just the beauty about your identity that that's what makes you who you are and makes you unique. And so to me, storytelling was something that was very, very normal to me at home. My home was my base. My home was my yahu. My home was my foundation. That's where everything started. And I just want to acknowledge my dear parents for that. 
So now I will go on to the second part of my talano. The second part of my talano is my love for language. So as I said earlier on, I was born in Suva. And so I could speak the Mbawan language very, very fluently. But my parents took us to Kandavu all the time when I was little. And we also host families that come from Kandavu to come to Suva. So I was able to code switch. I was able to copy and imitate any person who speaks a different dialect uh, when they're at home. And so I started to love my language. I started to love any dialect that is spoken. I found them beautiful. So to those of us who speak your dialect or language fluently, hold on to it. Do not let them go. They are your treasures. They are your gifts from your ancestors. Use it, speak it, and write about it too. Okay, so that is a wonderful challenge that I want to give it, uh, give out to you all today. Now we all know about the COVID-19 pandemic. Guess what? That is where the Talon Maui Doctor T started. Um, I remember I got a message from one of the parents in Fiji who told me that there was a news being announced that there's a pandemic or there's a virus uh, going around the world and it's coming over to Fiji. And there was this young boy who was also from Kandavu apparently, his name was Manoa. And uh, his mom is Merenda Ningasi and she's from the island of Nairai in Lomibiti. When the news was going on, Merendani messaged me and said, Teresi, my son is watching the pandemic news on the screen here, we're watching TV, but he doesn't know what's going on because the news is in English. Can you please tell me what this COVID-19 uh, is? And so a few of us, um, if I can acknowledge um, my two friends, um, Kelera Nganivato and Penny Seru. Uh, Kelera Nganivato was based in uh, Mexico, but now she's in Albania. And she's from Ra, the province of Ra. And Mr. Penny Seru is from Kandavu. He's based in Aotearoa. And so the three of us, one in Hawaii, one in Aotearoa, one in Mexico, we went to town with translating all the information about the virus. And so we started creating posters in the Fijian language. And that's how my Talanoa program started. And my love for language here started during the pandemic. So that's gonna be part of my life's history that the Talanoa with Dr. T started during the pandemic. And so we just had a wonderful time in um, you know, enjoying um, sharing the information about the uh, COVID-19, but in our beautiful language, because you know what? As Nelson Mandela said, quote, if you talk to a man in the language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart, unquote. And that is again, the power of language, the power of spoken word, namana nibosa. And so on my program with Talano with Dr. T, I know some of you have been following it. Uh, I've hosted a few of the USP academic staff, including Dr. Rosiana Langi, who talks about climate change in the Fijian language, Vinakavalevu Maramaneta, uh, Professor Patrick Nunn connects in from uh, University of Sunshine Coast in Australia. He comes in and talks about geology, archaeology, and he also acknowledges the importance of oral history. He gave an example in Kandavu. Uh, as you all know, on my island, we've got a dormant volcano, which is called Mount uh, Washington or Uli Nambukelewu. And when Professor Patrick Nunn went there, he found that there were so many oral history that were shared in most of the villages in Kandavu. And most of them actually correlate with some of the geological research that they were doing. And so when Professor Patrick Nunn came to talk on my platform, he mentioned to all of us who are listening on my program is acknowledge and value your oral history. Acknowledge your voice, acknowledge your story. And of course, the one and only special guest, Dr. Paul Garrity. And he's my monthly guest on my program where he comes on my program and talks about the different dialects of Fiji and everyone loves him. And Vinaka uh, Professor Patrick, Professor um, Patrick Nunn and Dr. Paul Garrity for enlightening us, uh, for reminding us about the beauty of our language. So here is just a few of the slides and uh, I'm gonna share this here, but remember it all on my YouTube channel, please subscribe. If I can remind you all and follow my Facebook page, 
um, and also like my Instagram page. So many of the stories that I put there, stories of COVID-19, uh, information about learning the language, going back to the basics of the alphabet and the vowels, as well as um, learning about the song. So you can sing your alphabet. So the children that I teach all over the world, we sing all the time because we realize that that's a beautiful way of learning our beautiful language. And not only that, I also included riddles. And uh, the last couple of, uh, uh, last October, uh, we shared a lot of riddles and we did a competition and it was so beautiful to get so many people sharing and wanting to know what these riddles were because many of these riddles are very old and we don't see them around anymore. I also created a poetry competition and it was so moving to receive so many beautiful poems from both young and old, from Fiji, and also those around the world. What a beautiful way to celebrate our language and not be ashamed of it, be proud of it. And that's something I want to remind our indigenous folks that are listening in. <clears throat> and also uh, my love for language goes as well to artifacts. And so when we were learning about the music and the serikali and the nursery rhymes and all of that, we realized that many of these uh, um, artifacts are in museums. So those of you who know me, uh, I've been working in the museum field for a long, long time. And so I want to bring this into my research. So this is the last part of my sharing today, my love for research. So I'm going to quickly just talk about education, which is so important for many of us. And of course, as I was mentioning earlier on, education starts at home. And so here, uh, I'm so grateful that I was able to have so many support uh, from people around the world who helped me with my uh, postgraduate studies in Australia and my master's and PhD studies too in Aotearoa. Um, I won't name you all, but if you're listening, for your kind support. And so as I was doing my research uh, in the field of repatriation, I've come to realize the beautiful role that museums do play um, in you know, looking after a lot of our artifacts, even our museums in the Pacific, but also the artifacts that are also kept internationally. You know, we can be able to build good relationships between the museums in the regions and the museums overseas. And so in my research, I remembered I interviewed uh, one of the Fijian artists, Sela Satora. And I'm gonna show some artifacts here on the screen so you can look at it while I read what he says. And so what he said to me was so moving uh, in which he said that musical instruments such as lali, you can see the lali here, the wui, concha, the rua, bamboo percussion, they can reignite patriotic feelings of Fijian identity for Fijians in Fiji and those living overseas. And what he said really touched me when he said that when these young people return home and reconnect with these artifacts that have left Fiji shores for many years, this can be a positive character building opportunity for these young ones. And what he said as well to end what he shared with me was he said this in Fijian, I quote, and this is translated, our cultural treasures can develop us as a people for sharing those beautiful words with me. And as I continued with my research, I realized that with my katoni buku or the bag or basket of knowledge was increasing and increasing all the time because I was networking and talking to different people in Aotearoa, in Australia, in Fiji, in England, in Europe, as well as in Canada, the places where I did my research. I realized that the work I was doing was part of a cultural revival. It was part of a cultural reawakening. There was revival, there was reactivating of spaces in museums, and there was also the reawakening of mana among the Fijian people. And so as you can see here, these are uh, two images reflecting the tattooing tradition of Fiji or Vengia. And on the left-hand side is a beautiful liku or the skirt that is woven and given to a young Fijian maiden after they get tattooed on gear. And on the right hand side is one of the tools um, that is used. And so I realized that the work that we do in the museum is so important. And also not only this information should stay in the museum, 
we should try and share it with everyone around the world. And what are the ways we can do it? And from my own experiences, we can do it by writing books. We can do it by sharing on this platform in this uh, Pacific History Association conference. Um, you can do it through performances, but other ways I could challenge our young indigenous, you know, Fijians or indigenous Oceania uh, brothers and sisters is to use the digital platform because this is the new normal. Look at us, we're all connected from around the world through Zoom. And what a way that we can be able to connect our villages to all these museums and connecting these museums to our young ones around the world. And so to conclude with my presentation today, I would like to share with you the questions, the three questions that I initially asked before. Who am I? How can we visualize history? How can we contribute in making history more audible? And so for me, the reflection is very important. Let's ask ourselves, what is my kuleana? What is my responsibility? Let us reflect, let us recenter, and let us remember the lessons that we have been gifted by those that have gone before us. Remember our responsibility to keep our stories alive. Continue the passing of our oral history to the next generation. And if I can answer the second question, the second question is how can we make history visible? One way is by actions and collaborations. So today I would like to invite all of us to look around. Let's look at some really good examples. You don't have to look far. Some of our good examples are already next to you in your own country. And so one example I would like to share is one of the projects that I've been part of is the Pacific Virtual Museum. And it's led by Tim Kong and his team in Wellington. And it also involves a lot of museums and libraries and archives in Australia, New Zealand, and now it's reaching many of us around the world. So Binakabakalebu, Tim Kong, and your team for enabling us through this digital media to open up the vaults, open up those archival documents and share them with our young ones. Because our younger generation, they need to know their history. They need to know their stories. And I think we need to, um, stop gatekeeping and we need to open up these doors and allow our young ones to access this information. Another example I want to share is a wonderful example in Fiji, which is led by Dr. Poloni Tamata and her team at USP, which is called the Solisau Project. And it's yet to be launched, but I just love the concept that we're able to use a digital platform to reach our young Fijian children around the world. So they can be able to learn their Fijian language and culture and the songs and the chants from the comfort of their living room. We can get our children in Canada, in, in, in Finland, in Norway, in Australia, New Zealand and connect them through their beautiful, beautiful history. And now I'll go to my third question. The third question here, uh, if some of you still remember is how can we make history more audible? And that is again, through our collaborations, yeah? Uh, I've got to name two other projects if I can, or maybe three. One is um, the Piala organization. These are some regional organizations that I want to acknowledge the amazing work today. Piala, Pima, and Pabika. So these are some organizations and I know there's many more. I think it's a Blue, um, Blue Shield Pacifica, Ecomos Pacifica, uh, Pacific Heritage Hub, um, and there's so many beautiful, you know, regional organizations that are doing some amazing work. The challenge for us is to reconnect and utilize the digital platform so we can share a lot of our knowledge and work together and work more, work more strongly for the benefit of our beautiful region here in Oceania. The second project is the uh, Native Hawaiian Pacific Island Museum Institute, which is a museum institute funded by the United States of America through the NEH grant, which has just been recently given to the University of Hawaii Manoa, University of Hawaii Hilo, and the East West Center. And uh, it's also supported by the Hawaii Museum Association, the Pacific Island Museum Association. And what a beautiful way to collaborate 
and work together in order to make history more visible, more audible, and more embracing and involving everyone uh, in the region. And so those are some of the three um, main questions that I want to leave for everybody today. Uh, and I know for the next four, three or four days in front of us, and I hope that my story is able to empower you and strengthen you and to give you some energy while you present your papers. And so to conclude, I will go back to my pepeha or my whakatauki from Aotearoa. Eaha te mea nui o te ao. What is the most important thing in the world? It is the people, it is the people, it is the people. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. He kanaka, he kanaka, he kanaka. We can the natamata, 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 tambu sakayani. So to conclude, my love for indigenous knowledge, language and research has taken me on a journey of discovery. One that enabled me to learn more, not only about myself, but learning so much about my own people, the Itoke of Fiji. My choice of a museum career is indeed a calling. So I can be a voice for my people whose treasures, yao, most of whom were taken from them in the early and mid 19th century. During this contact time period, they were period of peace and times of war and political instabilities in Fiji. And this alone through the research that I've done has enriched our Yabusa, our Vanua, and our Matenitu. And I can see that my research has become a tool to understand events that shaped Fiji to be what it is today. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation today. Mahalo nui loa, danevad koraba. If everyone can just put your hands together virtually for Tarisi. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for your passionate call to action. Really fantastic. Um, I won't talk too much. Uh, I'll throw it open. We have a bit of time for questions. Um, so um, everyone's been so good muting their mics. So well done on that. Um, but uh, I thought if, if people in the audience have questions, I might take the liberty of throwing the first question to those of, the, those of us in the ICT theater. So Anna has a mic and we'll probably take one question from the ICT theater. But if anyone else in the audience has a question, perhaps you can type it in the chat. Uh, and then um, after Tarisi's answered the ICT question, uh, I might mention your name and you can unmute yourself and, um, and ask your question to Tarisi. So we might have two or three questions before we wind up. Is that okay, Tarisi? <laughs> you need to take a moment, that's all right as well. I saw that reassuring hand in the background, uh, the husband, so he's doing a good job there. <laughs> um, so Anna might be there in ICT with the microphone. I'll just give a second for Anna to, to turn her mic on and pass that to whoever's in the room. It's Morgan uh, here in it and uh, my uh, congratulations uh, first of all first and foremost my congratulations uh, uh, dr tarisi for a wonderful wonderful opening and uh, i uh, uh, i could see a few uh, i think uh, i had to go out because it was getting uh, um, very, very heartening uh, and uh, I, I went out um, and I could see that in the outside the, 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 the door, you know, we have our support staff and most of the support staff are KVT and they were all standing there in the corners and, I, and, and listening to you and watching. And um, as you say, you know, because of the restrictions and also because of union regulations, not everybody can uh, be here, but I'm sure your words uh, your heartfelt words resonated right throughout. I, um, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to uh, resonate my own, uh, my own heartfelt uh, uh, for you. And, uh, and the, the, the issue of museum, uh, as you know, uh, and archives are, are, are important issues because we're still trying to, uh, to sort those things out in our own countries. 
and it's not always up in the uh, priorities amongst the, the budgets and with the governments. So I, I thank you for calling them out. Naka, mahalo. Naka wakalevu, Professor Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. Um, perhaps we still have time. If, if anyone in the Zoom room uh, has a question, um, uh, you can try and raise your hand, but it's, it might be hard for me to see everyone. So it's probably better if you can um, put a little note in the chat and then I can um, first in best dressed, whoever puts the first note, I can uh, hand it over to, to Teresi to answer. Your speech must have been that good that um, everyone is still stunned. I think I saw one hand, sorry. Is it Jess Pasisi? Uh, would you like to unmute your mic and, and perhaps answer, ask a question? Hello, to uh, Dr. Teresi. Um, coming to you from, from University of Waikato, so it's really great to see an alum. Um, my question was just hopefully a short one. I, um, I just wondered if you know, thinking about all of the, the different places that you've been to and the, and the connections between them, I, I wondered if you might tease out some of the kind of similarities or, or, or things that you, you know, that come from this love of language and love of, you know, these things that you're talking about. Are there, are there things from these different places that you, you keep coming to every time you, you move into an, a new Pacific space? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, most definitely. Uh, and I'm very privileged to have the opportunity to live in Aotearoa, as I mentioned, you know, for 16 years. Um, and um, we moved briefly as well to Australia and then now uh, in Hawaii. Um, I often um, uh, work alongside my children as well, because my son was born in Wellington and my daughter was one uh, when we moved to uh, New Zealand. And that's when I realized that. Uh, they were losing their Fijian language, particularly my daughter who was speaking the Vosavakaviti before we left for New Zealand. And that's when I realized that I need to step in as a parent to try and make sure that she still can, you know, speak the language or understand the, the, the essence of it. And yes, you know, even living in Aotearoa, um, I've come to realize and appreciate many of us who speak our fluent language or our language fluently. Uh, because when I was in uh, Aotearoa, I also uh, mix and work uh, with my uh, Maori colleagues. And uh, every time I try and learn their language as well. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, 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 a mutual relationship, right? And also here in Hawaii, uh, I remember when I was uh, teaching one of my Cultures of Oceania classes here, uh, I think it was two years ago, and one of the Hawaiian students in my class, before I started my class, he just said, um, Dr. Teresi, can you please just speak in Fijian? And I was kind of like, uh, I was just about to start my class and he was like, and I asked him, why, why do you want me to speak my language? And he said, I just want to hear it. And I didn't know where to start. So I decided to do my greeting, the one I just said earlier on. And the room was pin drop silence. Uh, half of my students were uh, of Hawaiian descent. And there were other students from Micronesia and others uh, think from the mainland. And uh, that moment stayed with me because after I introduced myself in my language, no one spoke after that. And they kept looking at me for me to continue speaking. And that was kind of like, you know, a moment that I realized I was like, wow, you know, the, the, the importance of language because it moved them. No one spoke. So that's when I realized that silence you know, it's also another form of language, which is what Professor Unesi Nambombombamba has written about. And that moment, you know, resonated with me. So to answer your question, my sister, yes. I think in Aotearoa, um, the need for more Maori language to be used, I kind of gravitate towards that. You know, it kind of pushed me to continue and help the Fijian language to be taught in New Zealand. And the same thing here in Hawaii. 
you know, when I meet up with my Hawaiian um, colleagues, you know, I listen to their Hawaiian conversation for those who can speak fluent Hawaiian, because there are some, which is awesome to hear. And the same thing is resonating with me, you know, what can I do as a Fijian to make sure that I continue to teach the Fijian language, uh, not to many Fijians here, but using the digital platform. So yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, it seems like that um, the language is like the pulling factor for me. And uh, it's something that connects me to everybody. So Vinakavakale for asking me that question, even though I have a museum background, but language keeps popping in. I can't help it. They just come. <laughs> Naka. Naka Tarisi. Um, we have two questions which might round us off and they seem quite related. So I might ask Helen to unmute and ask her question. And then after Helen, Iu Tungalu can ask um, their question as well. And you might have a double barreled answer. Naka. Naka, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Teresi. Um, it's Helen Gardner here speaking from the uh, Wurundjeri clans of the Kulin Nation, the lands of the Wurundjeri people in um, Melbourne and Victoria. Uh, and I know there's been a lot of work done or attempts to do a lot of work amongst it for, to revive or uh, do what they can to rescue Indigenous languages in um, Australia. And I'm, I'm really curious to know how important, how useful you found these digital platforms, these attempts to connect with people who want to try and maintain language or create or f inform their language knowledge. How, what would you say to perhaps to um, Indigenous communities in Australia trying to, to um, do this work? Thank you. Thank you. Vinaka, Helen. Yes, um, I find that uh, you know, technology is a really good way to um, provide access to um, classes uh, you know, online sessions or uh, even programs that are available through libraries and archives and museums. As you know, Helen, you know, many of our indigenous communities through the research that I've done in the field of museums, um, we represent a very small percentage of people in the community that go to these museums. Because uh, many of us, including myself, when I was younger, I didn't know what was the purpose of me going to the Fiji Museum when I was young at that time. And even my parents told me, the museum is not for you. The museums are for the tourists. That was the kind of like the normal um, way of looking at museums. Obviously now it has changed. Museums are now extensions of education facilities and institute. Uh, museums are now opening up their vaults um, and access um, to, to objects or artifacts or treasures that can be viewed. Uh, even though there are museums that have restrictions on some artifacts, maybe they're, they're, they cannot be shown because of its cultural restrictions. But if I can answer your question there, Helen, yes, you know, the online platform uh, using Zoom or using Google Classrooms, they are wonderful ways of enabling our people to keep speaking the language. And I have to say as well, Helen, that I also teach the Fijian language using Zoom to families around the world. I also do my online platform, which Dr. Nick uh, mentioned before, the Talano with Dr. T. But what some of the feedback that I've been getting that some of the Fijians who were born overseas who didn't hear the Vosavaka Viti at all, like I'm talking about Norway, Finland, Sweden. Yeah, Fijians are there too. And some of the feedback that are coming back is that they are listening to the, my podcast. And uh, remember one lady mentioned that she does her cleaning and she plays my YouTube video loud so that her kids can also hear it. And uh, they also use it as a way to remember, you know, so that kind of like memories and reconnecting back to your heritage. It's such a beautiful thing to do. And yes, it's worked for me, Helen. And I know at the Smithsonian Museum, uh, they also run a program called Recovering Voices um, in which they do different programs for artifacts. But uh, yeah, if it can work for me, uh, Helen, for Fiji, I'm sure it can work as well in Australia. If you need some help, talk to me, send me a message and I'll work with you. Vinaka Helen. Thank you, Christy. Uh, we'll 
we're almost out of time. So I'll ask you uh, to ask uh, their question uh, to sort of round us off and then I'll give a little round up at the end. Okay. Oh, my Lord Lover, Teresa, uh, Teresia, oh, sorry, Teresi, eh? damn it. <laughs> um, lovely Hello, to see your, your face and to hear your voice. Um, no, uh, I was just wondering about uh, that, that thing that you were saying about language and um, mm. quite often I'm looking at documents of, uh, mm. you know, people that have been writing in the, the uh, 19th century in, in Samoa and et cetera. And I was, and I always felt um, that there was a bit of a va that crossed over mm. time. And I was mm. just wondering whether that was something that uh, you could, you know, that you feel, I mean, obviously you do when you're talking about language and, and Fijian culture, but I was just wondering whether, um, and I'm sort of looking at that in terms of power across time, et cetera, mm. in, in terms of the archives. Uh, that was just an observation. There's a question in there somewhere. And if you can make sense of it, uh, <laughs> to receive well done, <laughs> but I'll leave you with that. Gosh. Day lover. Yes, so definitely, you know, I look at the language as a bridge um, that can, um, you know, uh, reduce the gap or the VAR, you know, between maybe the 1800s to uh, our time today. And um, also language is the bridge, um, the museums and the archives and the libraries and the galleries are also those forms of heritage bridges that can connect our people, you know, back to the past and vice versa. And so I'd really like to, um, you know, encourage uh, a lot of our people, even those back home uh, in Samoa, in your case, you, uh, and in Fiji, in my case, is to encourage a lot of our stories to be recorded, even for those who are uh, of, uh, you know, of elderly age now, um, you know, if we can work with the University of Samoa or the museum in Samoa, uh, and do that collaboration, the point that I mentioned in my presentation, a lot can be done. And we can be able to reduce that VAR back in the past to today. And the benefit will be mutual. It will benefit the older generation, our generation, and definitely it will benefit those in the future generation. Minaka Iu, I look forward to work with you too, Iu. Yeah, they love it, Teresi. Love it, I. Naka, and uh, if everyone can just join me in thanking Tarisi one more time for a wonderful keynote. Naka, Max, Kanchi, Naka, You'll see plenty of Max and other familiar faces in the coming days. Um, <laughs> since we're almost at 1 p.m. Fiji time, I'm going to just give a little uh, closing uh, to sort of brief everyone on how this Zoom thing will work for the next uh, three days. Um, so if you just bear with me, it'll just be a couple of minutes and then we'll be done. Um, so uh, if you check your programs, you'll see that we have two other keynotes that are scheduled for the afternoons. So Reverend Dr. Latu Latai's keynote uh, will be broadcast from the National University of Samoa. Uh, Louise is, is helping assist with that. So thank you, Louise Fafatai. And that's at 4 p.m. Fiji time. And then Majeline Kim will be delivering her keynote from Chuk uh, in FSM with the assistance of David Hanlon. And that's on Friday at 6 p.m. Fiji time. So we really look forward to both of those and we thank them for their time and effort. Um, apologies for the little confusion with Eventbrite sent out an automatic email today. Um, and with Fiji not changing to daylight savings time, uh, some people were a little bit confused about when we were starting. Uh, but for your watchers now, it is 1 p.m. pretty well on the dot, uh, Fiji time at the moment. Um, so hopefully you can estimate or guesstimate, or you can always send me an email if you're a little bit confused as well. Um, today's welcoming session is a little different to the rest of the conference because this one we made it uh, public. Uh, so although you joined on Zoom, we also live streamed on YouTube um, so that other people can listen and watch later on. Um, so from now on, the Zoom sessions won't be recorded, um, uh, but the room setup will be essentially the same as here. And well done to everyone on, on keeping their mics muted. It, it worked really well. So by default, when you join the rooms in the coming days, your microphone should be automatically muted when you enter a room. Um, but just take care to check it's muted when you join or leave, just in case. It will be nice for the presenters to see your faces on camera when they're speaking. But if you have a weak internet connection, then it might be advisable to try and switch your camera off. Um, now, we emailed a conference program to all the registered participants, and unfortunately, we've, we've reached our limit with how many people we can take in, so we, we, we cannot accept any late registrations at this stage. Um, 
but we have three Zoom link streams that are set up to run every day for the whole day. So those are named Rua, Dua, and Tolu. So the same link and password that you see at the top of the program will actually work every day for all the panels in those colored columns. Um, this means that um, when the session finishes and there's a break between the panels, uh, the room will not close, it'll just stay open. Uh, and you're welcome to stay online and talk to others in the room if you wish. Uh, you can go into a room and leave a room as often as you want uh, by clicking the link. Um, there's no problem with that. Um, and some other sessions, such as the PHA general meeting this afternoon, and our keynote speakers, uh, which are sort of standalone events, uh, they have their own separate Zoom links, which are listed on the program. Um, so for the panel discussions, roundtables, uh, uh, those events, uh, we have three specific stream links, uh, but for the other individual events, uh, you'll have to click on a link, which is also on that, that booklet. Um, I'll just pause and check if everyone's following. Sorry, because I've got my notes on my page. Uh, we ask that panel chairs and panelists try and join their Zoom room about 10 to 15 minutes before their start time to do a sound check. So we're going to have a lunch break now for an hour. So about quarter to two. Um, people can, uh, the, the panels and chairs and panelists can try and join in and just do a sound check. So maybe if everyone else holds off till maybe five minutes before their session, um, uh, but so far everything's working really well. One of our volunteers will be on standby to show you how to share your screen. So there'll be a panel chair in each session and one of our IT volunteers. And I really wanna thank Anamatan Dranda, Anina Wangatambu, Sonia Sokai, Nicholas Hoare and Mila Vaha who are volunteering their time to provide IT support. Um, we have backup hosts in the room so that if there's a power cut in Fiji, which happened today, uh, the room still continues. Um, and likewise, if you are cut off, the room will still stay open. Um, so our IT volunteers will be silent helpers in the background. And we're grateful if the panel chairs can take charge during the sessions to respond to the audience, to ensure that panels start and finish on time. Panel chairs will warn panelists when they're exceeding their allocated time, and they may cut you off if required to ensure everyone has an equal opportunity to present. If your connection is weak or disconnects, we suggest restarting Zoom. If it's very distorted, panel chairs might actually intervene and, and suggest that we move to the next speaker, and then they'll give you a chance to sort of start your presentation at, at the end of the session. If you have any questions or concerns during the conference, please email me on PHA Suva. 2021 at gmail.com and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. With those IT tips, um, I wanna wish you all the best in the next few days. Uh, thank you for joining our welcoming today. Uh, thank you to our MC, the wonderful Anna Matandranda uh, for keeping us on track today. And as Morgan mentioned, thank you to all our friends in the ICT theater, uh, those, uh, those Fijians in the background working really hard for us at Lothala campus, Michael, Clarence, Isaiah, Sulueti, Apollonia, Tara, Vinny, Samesi, all those, uh, those wonderful people that have been supporting this event. Thank you for today and this wonderful welcoming ceremony. Um, with that, uh, we'll bring this session to a close and we'll take a one hour break um, before we begin the Rua, Dua and Tolu streams at 2 p.m. Um, so with that, Vnaka uh, Vakalevu, Shukriya, Fayaksia and uh, goodbye for now. Take care.